Hi, right, good afternoon. As you can see, I shaved. Okay, I'm back. Um, I put this video together because I've just read a comment from ESPN about Chris Browser and what he said, and I'm going to play both videos, and I want you all to see what's going on here. I want you to hear what's going on here and uh, to let you know that in society, especially when you're a public figure, this is all the more reason why I would encourage every man and woman who was a Christian to stand together in one voice when announcements like this happen. Because I don't know what all this talk is for. I mean, the President of the United States, who should be worried about our troops, who should be worried about this economy, has time off his day to call. Okay, and this is a man who says he's a Christian. Now, let me let me understand this very carefully. I want you to know this. President Obama has called himself a Christian on many occasions. Okay, he has time out of his day not to um, uh, get Congress to overturn Roe versus Wade, which is legalized abortion, legalized murder of, of innocent babies. Um, he don't have time to uh, go and try to make peace in the Middle East. Or fix the economy. You know, it's Tuesday. No, he has time to call this NBA player up and give him so much props on the fact that he that he's coming out the closet for being gay. All these players, Steve Nash, for example, Kobe Bryant, Dwayne Wade, all coming out in support of him. Shaquille Neal. Charles Barkley, Ernie Johnson, Kenny Smith, those on the um, on TNT that broadcast games. Now, I will say this about Kenny Smith and Charles, mainly Kenny Smith. Kenny Smith made the argument that people like me who stand in opposition to them should not be put down neither, that they should be tolerant on both sides. You know what I'm saying? But, but I have to um, disagree on the fact that there will be no tolerance on the Christian side, because God does not tolerate sin, whether it's homosexuality, adultery, fornication, lying, stealing. But we're and right now we're talking about homosexuality, and we're not going to tolerate. It. I will respect and love a gay person. I will not agree with their lifestyle at all. Now I'm going to play Chris Bowser, Chris Browser of ESPN. I'm going to play. The exact words he said on my phone, I'm going to play it to you. You can listen to it. And then I'm going to play ESPN's comment. I'm going to read, actually, ESPN's comment about what Brassard has said. And I want you to notice some very important details, very important things going on here between ESPN and Chris Browser. So hold on. Let me play Chris Browser. And just listen to what he said about Jason Collins being gay and all that. Now, I'm a Christian. I don't agree with homosexuality. I think it's a sin, as I think all sex outside of marriage between a man and a woman is. And LZ knows that. He and I have played on basketball teams together for several years. We've gone out, had lunch together. We've had good conversations, good laughs together. He knows where I stand. And I know where he stands. I don't, you know, criticize him. He doesn't criticize me and call me a bigot, call me ignorant, call me intolerant. And now that I, I hear, and they're talking to some people around the league, there are a lot of Christians in the NBA. And they don't want to be, just because they disagree with that lifestyle, they don't want to be viewed and called bigoted and intolerant and things like that. And that's what LZ was getting at. Uh, just like I may tolerate someone whose lifestyle I disagree with, he can tolerate me, my beliefs, and he disagrees with my beliefs and my lifestyle, but true tolerance and acceptance is being able to handle that in, with, with, as mature adults and not criticize each other and call each other names. Personally, I, I don't believe that you can live an openly homosexual lifestyle or and openly pre like premarital sex between heterosexuals. If you're openly living that type of lifestyle, then the Bible says you know them by their fruits. It says that you know that's a sin. And if you're openly living in unrepentant sin, whatever it may be, not just homosexuality, adultery, fornication, premarital sex between heterosexuals.
ancestors, whatever it may be, I believe that's walking in open rebellion to God and to Jesus Christ. So I would not characterize that person as a Christian because I don't think the Bible would characterize them as a Christian. Now that's what Chris said. Nothing wrong with what he said. I give him a lot of credit, and I think he's courageous, and I think that he should get props because despite the potential backlash that will happen because of what he said, he had the courage to say it. He's not patting him on the back saying, good job, you're a hero, you know, you're this, you're that. You know, it's funny. That these people are boot, they're boosting Jason Collins up so much, but one day Jason Collins is going to die, and one day he's going to come face to face with that judgment. Five one second in hell will change anybody's mind, but unfortunately, it'll be too late. Now I read the statement from ESPN. They had their comment about the situation, and I'm going to play that comment for you. Well, actually, I read the comment myself and recorded it on my phone. I didn't want to write it down because my writing is sucks. So I am going to play this, and I want you to hear what ESPN had to say about that. Quote, we regret that a respectful discussion of personal viewpoints became a distraction from today's news. The organization said in a statement reported by Breitbart, ESPN is fully committed to diversity and welcomes Jason Collins' announcement, end quote. Now, that was very interesting. Very interesting. Why are they backing Jason Collins and not backing Chris Browser, who works for them? I don't get it. It sounds like Chris Browser and that guy, Jason Collins, are friends. Like he said, they play basketball together. He, they know where each other stand at, but there's no criticism, no name calling, or anything like that. Now, I think it's important that I look up what the word tolerance is. Now, I know what tolerance is, but I want to give a clear, precise definition of what the word tolerance is. So I'm going to open up this dictionary.com, this dictionary app. That I have. Let me type in the word tolerance. We're going back to grade school here. Tolerance. Let's see what tolerance is. Search. All right. Here's tolerance. A fair, objective, and permissive attitude to the, toward those who are, whose opinions, practices, race, religion, nationality, etc., differ from one's own. Freedom from bigotry. That's intolerance is a noun. The second definition is a fair, objective, and permissive attitude toward opinions and practices that differ from one's own. Another definition, interest in and concern for ideas, opinions, and practices, etc., foreign to one's own, a liberal, undogmatic viewpoint. The act or capacity of enduring endurance. That's another definition for it. Now let me see here. Let's see if God's tolerant. He says, the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived. And he says, neither adulterers, fornicators, idolaters, nor the effeminate. Now, as I said before, effeminate is a man who walks, talks, and acts like a woman. A man that walks, talks, and acts like a woman is a gay man. Am I right? I'm right. Okay. Um, so my basic thing in hearing ESPN and knowing from stuff in the past where somebody that's a Christian stood up and said something right, they always get criticized. I think that ESPN was wrong to even issue that statement. If they're going to support Jason Collins, they need to show respect to Chris Browser and his opinion. Now, the funny thing is they take the gay position, but they don't take Chris Browser. So where's the tolerance at? That's what I'm saying. That's what I said before in the last video. There's no tolerance on either side. Now I'm fixing to get down here with this homosexuality thing. I'm not going to do another video about gays. I'm going to move on to the next topic. But let's make this clear. I'm not for gay marriage. I'm not for gay rights. The only thing that I'm for 
is yes, there need to be serious consequences to any man or woman who would terrorize physically and verbally curse, exploit, beat up, hurt anybody that's gay. That's gay bashing. That is totally unacceptable. It is 100% unacceptable. No gay person should have to fear getting beat up or hurt because somebody disagrees with them. Call them a fag and a bull dagger and this and that. Those names are not necessary. We as Christians, we have to walk in love towards gay people. And I'm not just talking about just smiling and saying hi. I mean actually being nice. You don't have to agree, and we don't agree. But we still can walk in love. Because if Jesus was walking this earth right now, he would love them, he would fellowship with them, and get them saved. That's the objective. Now, get marriages between a man and a woman. That's Genesis chapter 3. God created Adam. Okay? God brought all the animals to Adam to see what he would name them. He named them all. But, and I like what this preacher said the other day. All the animals were male and female. Because how can two males reproduce? I mean, really, you can look in nature and see that homosexuality is wrong. Because if, if, if there were two male animals and not no woman, if there was two lions and they both were male, there would be no lions on the earth but those two. And then when they died, there would be no lions. Lions would be extinct. Same thing with birds, same thing with beetles, all that. Okay? But Adam didn't have anyone compatible with him. God put Adam to sleep, took one of his ribs, closed up the flesh, and made a woman. God brought the woman to Adam, and Adam said, this is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, for she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and mother. You listen to that? Therefore shall a man leave his mother and father and cleave unto his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. What God joined together, let not man separate. And what God's joined together, let no man separate. You heard that? Let no man separate. This, should, this shouldn't even be a discussion. Marriage is between a man and a woman, period. That's it. That's it. Every culture, even ungodly, wicked cultures, marriage is between a man and a woman. Anything other than that is evil. Gays should not be allowed to adopt children. And this is why I say that. When you're raising a child, home is the place where you're supposed to learn what's right from wrong. Where you learn about integrity and righteousness. And I don't believe for one second that two gay parents can raise a child. Now let me express this really clearly. Gay parents who are raising children, they're presenting a false family to them. A family that you have two mommies. I'm your mother. This is my girlfriend. Oh, my wife. And that's okay. That's what they present those children. They're sending them a false sense. Children believe their parents. The kids grow up believing that same thing. And they start looking at Christians like we're wrong. And guess what? They die and then they go to hell. Do you see the point in all this? Satan is deceiving and manipulating and crawling his snaky little behind through this country. Deceiving people. Manipulate people, twisted God's word, scaring Christians and keeping them from standing up. That's not right. My attitude towards gays is simple. You want to be gay? That's your choice. But you're not going to get legally married. Your marriage will not be recognized. And I'm going to tell you something. If the people vote for that to happen and it happens, well, so be it. Because this is a democracy. And we vote for our leaders. And people vote for people who take their position on issues, right? A person that's pro-choice will not vote for a person that's pro-life. Someone who is for same-sex marriage, they're not going to vote for somebody that's against it. Why do you think people didn't vote for Mitt Romney? Now, I know Mitt Romney flip-flopping this and that, blah, 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 but the point is he's against same-sex marriage. President Obama is not. 
he's for same-sex marriage. Oh, his daughters talked to him, and his daughters convinced him that this was the right thing to do. So he let his daughters convince him of, of a policy for the United States, really? Really. And yet I hear all these people who were Bush bashing. You know, at least George Bush had the courage to stand in the gap for families. Because, you know, that's why he passed the Defensive Marriage Act, which was a great bill that President Obama, as soon as he took office, wiped it out. And he's a Christian. How are you a Christian if you're against the Bible? And I, and I, I cry up for crying. I can't understand how anybody can misinterpret what the Bible says. I mean, it says that a man shall not wear clothes like a woman, should not even put on woman's garments. The man cannot lay down if a man lies with another man as with a woman. That's an abomination. They shall be put to death. That was God's law in the Old Testament for the Jewish people, the nation of Israel. Now, just because that's Old Testament don't mean that's not valid today. Now, the only difference between the Old Testament and the New Testament is that in the Old Testament, the blood of animals was shed once a year for the remission of sins. In the New Testament, Jesus Christ himself shed his blood one time so that all could be forgiven. There's more to it than that. But understand this, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday today and forever. I am the Lord, the scripture said, I change not. God's opinion about homosexuality has not changed. It's still wrong, Tyler Perry. Are you looking at this, Tyler Perry? Dressing up like Medea, that everybody laugh and grin at you so much? God said that a man should not put on woman's garments. Now, I'm speaking to you for a moment, Tyler Perry, because your movies is directed at Christian audience. Direct at a Christian office. You are playing the lead character of Medea. You put on women's clothes. And let me tell you something. A man who constantly put on women's clothes and try to act like a woman, something weird about you. Something is very weird about you. I'm not going to go as far as to say you're gay, but something is weird about you. Yes, you're funny. Oh, yeah, you command the screen. You have everybody crack of life. I, I work at the movie theater. Okay? I've seen all your movies. Okay, I know I see the people laughing at Greg, and I hear you mocking the church, mocking God, mocking his word, Satan using you as a mouthpiece to slander God's people. But you know what? You say you're a Christian, you read the Bible, and you believe it, you will take up that Medea Alpha, and you'll find a woman to play that. And there's some good, young, talented women out here. Heck, Jill Scott can play Medea. Yeah, she can. Why not? Why Jill Scott can't play Medea? Why not? Of course she can. The point I'm trying to make is in this society, we are systematically being manipulated and desensitized to homosexuality. Movies that have gay characters on there, I can't fathom why they better put a character on there. Now, let me confess, I'm a big General Hospital fan. I, I, I wouldn't say I like soap operas. I like a soap. General Hospital. And this character that showed up on this show about a couple of months ago, this character goes by the name of Phil, a gay dude. Now, looking at the storyline, look at how the show goes. This guy has absolutely no business on this show. There's no purpose or reason for this character to be on there. You know what I think? They just put him on there to try and force that view on us. I had an issue with Shrek the Third. Yeah, Shrek the Third, a children's movie. Why do you have this character that's a man, but he's clearly dressed as a woman? Right? Why did he need to have that character in a cartoon for? An animated film, why? Did you ever see the movie Hitch? I'm going way back a little bit. But in Hitch, there was this guy that worked with Eva Mendez's character at the news thing, a gay dude. And once again, I'm looking at this character, and I'm like, this, why, what purpose do we have in this movie? It could have been a straight guy. What purpose did he serve? One more movie I'll give an example for. Eddie Murphy's A Thousand Words. A Thousand Words or Less, I think is the title. There was a scene where he goes to this parenting class where he learns to be a good dad. Right? And you see couples there with, their, with the husbands, which are their fathers. But then you have a scene with two dudes holding a baby. What the heck? When I saw that scene, I was liking that movie at first. I was turned off by it. We didn't want to look at another minute of that movie. 
look here. If we don't do something about this in this country, we're in trouble. We're already seeing it. The more, and I'm, I'm not speaking to any person that's reading, looking at this, that's ungodly, that's not, that don't care about the Bible, that's you're for inclusion and tolerance of everything. And let me say this first. I put a statement on Facebook today about tolerance. Since we're going, let's tolerate homosexuality. Well, let's tolerate bestiality. In a case, you all don't know what bestiality is. Bestiality is sex with animals. So let's, let's be tolerant of that. Let's be tolerant of men who like little boys. I mean, maybe he was born that way. Now, we don't want to discriminate, so let's tolerate a man who has a hot spot, a little boy. Let's tolerate that. Let's tolerate a female, a little girl, who has feelings sexually towards a grown woman. Let's tolerate that. Hey, let's tolerate liars. Let's tolerate thieves. Let's, tol let's tolerate drunk people. Let's tolerate drug addicts. Hey, let's tolerate everything. I ask this question. If we tolerate every, if we tolerate every single thing in this country, what kind of country would we have? Total chaos. Total. I hope I said some stuff here to strengthen those who are Christian for real and those who are not. I just want to let you know Jesus loves you. He died for you and rose again. He suffered, bled, died for you. Please, choose Jesus. Turn from your wicked ways. Believe the gospel. Jason Collins again, brother. I'm not on your side. And I'm not apologizing for that. I think you're wrong. I think all the support you get is a trap to keep you in that position that you're in, being a gay man in this country. Ultimately, one day you're going to die. And when you die, it's going to be too late to change your mind. It's going to be too late to say, you know what, I was wrong. Because when your heart stops beating and you step into eternity, you will be in hell. And God don't want that for you. Jesus don't want that for you. Jesus said hell was prepared for the devil and his angels. Mankind was never, ever supposed to go there. But mankind willfully choose to reject Jesus Christ, to reject the word of God, to reject truth, and rather accept the lies that Satan says. To my brothers and sisters in Christ, be strong. Look for every opportunity. In fact, you don't have to look for the opportunity. Just let the opportunity come to you. And always be ready to give an account for the hope that's in you. Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Thank you. Have a nice day.